I am the project engineer for the what we call the JWPCP, or Joint Water Pollution Control Plant Effluent Outfall Tunnel Project. And I work for the sanitation districts of Los Angeles County. We are a special district that handles the wastewater and solid waste management for over 5 million people in the uh, Los Angeles County. Now this tunnel project serves just 17 of those districts which we call our Joint Outfall System or JOS. And the JWPCP is the only ocean disposal facility that we have. We, have, we just deal with sanitary sewers, uh, no storm water. The main focus of this project is to replace our two existing tunnels, the 8-foot tunnel and a 12-foot tunnel that are reaching the end of their useful life. During our environmental process, we did look at building a new tunnel and ocean outfall. And doing the hydraulic analysis realized that it is our eight-foot tunnel that limits the system. The planning for the Clearwater program will take us out to the year 2050, but the tunnel is definitely going to be designed to go beyond that because we don't want to have to build a fourth one anytime soon. We will be building a new 18-foot diameter a seven mile long tunnel to uh, take the other two out of service. So if in the future there is ever an earthquake, we can divert the flow into the existing ones and uh, go and inspect the new one and then put it back into service. This project is strictly the tunnel and the tie-in structures to divert the effluent into the new tunnel and then also the structures down at the beach to connect it to the outfalls. The eight foot tunnel was constructed in 1937 and then the 12 foot was constructed in a series of four sections with the first one beginning in 1947 and the last one completed in 1958 and that's the last time we've ever been in those existing tunnels. We believe they're in great shape. We don't see any major head loss in our system, so we are confident that we don't have any uh, collapse or restrictions in the lines, but nonetheless, we can't get into them. Uh, access is very limited, and we need both tunnels to be operational. Our uh, geotechnical program is actually very close to wrapping up. Um, the northern part of the alignment is in alluvium type material, and the southern half gets into weak rock like material. Part of the geological risk will be in the alluvium material. Uh, we are on average about 60 to 70 feet below the surface. We are in groundwater. That right now from a geological standpoint is our big concern. Then when we get into the rock-like material, it'll be trying to identify where these pockets of squeezing ground are located. But we do know we cross two faults. Uh, the main one is called the Palos Verdes Fault, and it is deemed an active fault. Uh, the second one is the Cabrillo Fault, uh, but what's unique about that one is the squeezing ground that we will be going through. We encountered it when the first two tunnels were constructed, so we're going to assume we're going to hit it when we go uh, with the new tunnel. My grandfather, he was the construction manager of two of the sections of the 12-foot tunnel, and uh, my father was involved in the Nice and the East project. He was in charge of the Bureau of Engineering for the City of Los Angeles. And then I'm now working on this one. So in a way, a uh, third generation of a you know, public servant working in a major tunnel project. Uh, the new tunnel will have steel pipe, 16 feet in diameter, installed inside the 18-foot tunnel in the areas where we believe the fault splays come near the surface of the PV fault. If the fault ever does move, the pipe will bend, it'll distort, but it won't rupture. Well, because we know we're going through the Wilmington oil field, even though it's on the western edge of the oil field, and it was at one time one of a, a very large producer of crude oil, we are going to proceed as if this is a gassy environment. Well the existing tunnels are approximately six miles and we figured a straight line would be fairly close to that uh, but it was all of the private property that we would be going under and made that option not feasible. One of the other dynamics is the hydraulics of our system and at times during certain flows we have to pump our effluent out. 
Uh, we can gravity flow for the majority of the time, but when we do pump, we do obviously induce quite a bit of internal pressure on the tunnel liner. And we were looking at different means of how to handle that. And then we started looking at the post-tensioning. Well, the idea is to cast a duct in the concrete segment. The contractor will come in and then feed a tendon through the duct and then tighten it. And then we will grout the pocket and the conduit. Then that tendon will take all of the load and our tunnel will not fail. We anticipate just doing it more in the alluvium material, so it's, I'd say about 40% of the alignment is what we're looking at. Uh, we will be the first in the United States to employ this method. Because of that, we're going to do a uh, proof of concept. We're going to build some rings and we will pressurize them to make sure our concept is sound and then go forward. We are working towards a 60% design submittal. And right now our goal is to try to bid the project by the end of 2016. Uh, our estimate right now is $550 million and this will be the single largest capital improvement project our agency has ever undertaken. Uh, we are going to go with a design bid build. That's what our agency does and I know there's a lot of talk in the industry to do design build and other methods of delivering these contracts, but for a project of this magnitude, uh, we're not going to try design build on a project of this size for the first time. Because there is some talk of trying to separate it into three different contracts, but we figure if we keep it all together, it keeps the dollar amount of the project at a high level, and that uh, might serve as a de facto pre-qualification. If we stay to our schedule, the bulk of the construction will begin in 2018 sometime. Anticipate four and a half years of tunneling, and the overall project is anticipated to be seven and a half to eight years of construction.